principal negotiation lasted two years. It was, without a doubt, the longest and most difficult task uh, I've ever faced. Twelve parties, plus myself, and I had two colleagues helping me as chairman. After about a year and a half in the main negotiation, we hit what we thought was rock bottom. We made no progress, and we broke for Christmas in 1997. The violence spiraled dramatically, and the whole process seemed <coughs> destined for failure. And two months later in February, in despair, really, and discouragement, I devised a plan to establish an early, firm, and unbreakable deadline. A deadline couldn't guarantee success, but I felt it made it possible. The absence of a deadline, I was certain, would result in a full acceleration of the conflict that had gone on for so long before. So, after consultation with the parties, I chose Easter weekend. For those of you familiar with Irish history, you'll know that's an important time in Irish history. And I established a midnight April 9th as a deadline. I developed a program literally day by day and we began a truly intensive process that went round the clock for the last few days. The Prime Ministers of Great Britain and Ireland came to Belfast and under intense pressure we were able to get an agreement. Now what did it take? Patience, five years of effort, perseverance, the main negotiation lasted about 700 days, and for 699 days, they said no. <laughs> Almost every day, reporters asked me, Senator Mitchell, you have failed to get a peace agreement, when are you going home? Well, in a sense, they were correct. If your objective is to get a peace agreement, until you actually get it, you have failed to do so. Learning to listen is one of the most important lessons of my life. I've never learned anything while I was speaking, but I've learned a lot while I was listening to others. The key to a solution is easy to state, but very difficult to achieve. It's the mutual commitment of Israel and the Palestinians, the active participation of the United States government, and the support and assistance of other governments and institutions who can and want to help. I commend Secretary of State John Kerry for the effort he's now making, and hope and pray that he succeeds, and that will occur, I believe, when the people of Israel and the people of Palestine recognize, both of them, that it is in their self-interest that neither of them can get what they want by denying to the other what they want. Security for Israel, a state for the Palestinians. Here in the United States, power and principle are mutually enhancing and must be firmly bound together. The American Declaration of Independence was a powerful statement of the right of free people to govern themselves. The first ten amendments to our Constitution, what we call the Bill of Rights, is one of the most eloquent statements ever written of the right of the individual to be free from oppression by government. And I believe that power must be deployed in service to our ideals, not in contradiction of because it is those ideals that have been and are today the primary basis of American influence in the world. We are free, and we will remain free only if we make certain that there is opportunity for every member of our society.